How far would you go to be the best, the number one in your industry? You've got to be willing to put everything on the line. And today's story is about a man who did just that. A man with dreams to be the number one bouncy castle business. He wanted to be the jumping castle god. But unfortunately, he flew a little too close to the sun and his wings burned up. Well, not really his wings. He just burned up every business that also sold jumping castles. He committed a series of arson attacks on rival bouncy castle businesses. His name is James Balcom, and he looks like a silly character you'd make with a Dark Souls character creator. He's currently serving an 11-year sentence for all of this, and I just found the whole story so wild. I legitimately feel bad for all the rival businesses because a few of them lost their entire business to his arson arson attacks. So there were very real victims and very real trauma from it, from having their literal place of work be lit on fire and fucking incinerated by this madman, this lunatic. So I wanted to go over this story here because it's a weird one. Did you see the video on Melbourne's Bouncy Castle King that was jailed over a string of fire attacks on his rival Bouncy Castle businesses? Oh my god, what? Anderson threw a Molotov cocktail through a smashed window at a business, causing a huge blaze that engulfed the factory and destroyed 110 jumping castles. And it looks like he's going to jail. And it looks like he's done quite a few of these. This is very interesting. This happened last month. You've been holding out on me? Why didn't you tell me about this? Jumping castle operator jailed over arson attacks on Melbourne ri rivals. James Balcom set on destroying rival businesses that if one fire caused minor damage, he commissioned another. Wow. He desired to be the number one in Melbourne's jumping castle game, and had seen him jailed for up to 11 years over a series of arson attacks. What a crazy thing to commit your life to, being the number one jumping castle guy. The whole, yeah, the whole bouncing castle cartel. It's so weird. It, it seems like most often the most unhinged business people are the ones in like the children's entertainment center or um, sphere. Like the bouncy castle guys running like a an arson unit to take out competitors. Surprised this isn't from Florida. Fucking true. Amen. I am almost disappointed it's not from Florida, if I'm being honest. The County Court of Victoria heard that Balcom, whose company, Awesome Party Hire, was ranked number one on Google after he commissioned the attacks on rival businesses, was arrested after he ordered that his own shed be torched. Galaxy Brain covering his tracks. No, I'm not, I'm not the one behind the arson attacks. Look, someone lit my empty shed on fire last night. We have to put a stop to fucking Firefly ASAP. Please, God, anyone, the human torch has gone loose. He's rogue. Only way to stay on top. I would argue the only way to stay on top is to legitimately be the best jumping castle business as opposed to the only one that's not lit on fire. For example, let's say I'm in the market for getting some bouncy castles and I really want high quality product. I'm checking Google and awesome party hires number one. But then I scroll down and it says like all of the ones underneath it are literally cremated. I'd be like, this is fishy. <laughs> I'll, I'll just, I'll just get a bigger birthday cake. Fuck the, fuck the castle. I feel like they'd just be like a very big red flag if that is the only jumping castle business that's left standing. Three days after a March 2017 fire, Anderson was arrested and subsequently named Balcom as the instigator of the blaze and the attacks on rival businesses. Oh, so this has been going on for a while. Balcom, 58, appeared on Thursday by video link from prison in the county court where he was jailed for up to 11 years. Malcolm has already served two years and five months and will be eligible for parole after seven years and ten months. Damn. They got him. I really am imagining like a godfather situation. <laughs> like it really seems so fucking intense. In the bouncy castle game. You come to me on the eve of my daughter's birthday party. And light my bouncy castle business on fire. <laughs> you got some nerve. It's a dirty game in a cruel world. Yeah. It's not easy to put a smile on the face of children. It comes at a cost. And that cost is fire and flames.
They're bouncing on the backs of the corpses of other bouncy castle businesses that came before them. And they don't even know it. It impacted the lives, livelihood of others, and caused significant loss, suffering, and emotional trauma. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Ar Arsenal will do that to you. One business was targeted three times. At that point, just hire full-time firefighters on standby. That is so interesting. What does he look like? I want to look him up. J oh, wow. This... I imagine you also got an image in your head of some, like, lunatic-looking guy. I'm just going to tell you right now, he looks exactly like the image you have in your head. This looks like an AI-generated arsonist. What the fuck? It's always the people you least expect, I suppose. <laughs> Jesus. Why is his head so pointed? I don't know, man. I didn't create him in the Street Fighter 6 character creator. I have no idea. I didn't work on these sliders. He got done dirty, though. I'll tell you that much. God, this is so powerful. You became very successful in the jumping castle industry, but you also became completely fixated and obsessed with it. It consumed your every waking moment, Court Judge Stuart Bales told Balcom. You became the Dark Knight. You fell right into the Joker's palms. You're better than this, James. Gotham deserved more. Is that a mugshot? Yeah, he's already served two years of his sentence. So this must have been when they brought him in. They probably had to drag him kicking and screaming out of his bouncy castle. 110 jumping castles. Ignited and lost in an instant. Jesus, they lost their entire business from that. <laughs> 